This video shows you how to mask, prep or prepare your bedroom, living room, kitchen and bathroom rooms prior to painting. It also encompasses your wall, floor, ceiling and furniture. Click on the link in the description to see how to paint all the rooms in the aforementioned post prepping or preparation. So here you've got a conjunction of painting and prepping or preparation tools. The first listing typically covers painting tools that you'd need to get the job done. Whilst the second listing pretty much covers the tools that you would need to prep or prepare your room prior to painting. It is absolutely vital to prep or prepare your room prior to painting and to complete your painting work you will need the tools shown here. So let's identify some of the items. You've got your carpet protector here. You've also got your dust sheet here, polythene sheet, your painters or frog tape, a 3M high precision professional masking tape, your general purpose masking paper or brown paper and a ladder, your dust cover furniture protector, your masking tape, your 180 and 80 grit sandpaper. You've got some wall filler and wood filler, some scraper or knife, a two inch painter's brush or a five piece brush set, which includes a 1.5, two inch and three inch brush in the five piece brush set, electrical gloves, and your two to four feet quick release roller extension pole, the corner roller pad, and the cage frame roller. So this is your cage frame roller and you've got the white corner roller pad, you know, that's sat in the scuttle. Your two to four feet extension pole fits into the assembled cage frame roller and the corner roller pad. To use the pole, all you need to do is to unscrew the cap at the top and screw it into the frame cage roller, which has got the roller pad inserted into it. And to extend the pole from two to four feet, just push on them levers, okay? The extension pole can be used in the roller tray and the scuttle. And here you've got your scuttle liner and roller tray liners. The liners do come in handy as you don't always have to clean your roller tray and scuttle with um, methylated spirits and white spirits. You know, you save a lot of time if you use them um, liners, okay? And, you know, depending on the size of your room, from experience, I found that, you know, you need about a minimum of two frog tapes or painter's tape to mask your rooms or each room. And here you've got your paint kettle or bucket, your paint mixer to mix the paint, methylated spirit and white spirit to clean your bucket, your scuttle, your roller trays, your paint brushes. You know, pretty much dissolves paint residue that would not come off. You've also got your sugar soap and microfiber cloth to remove stains and marks. And here we've got the actual paint in matte, in diamond matte and in eggshell, okay? I have gone through an exhaustive list to differentiate between, you know, your prepping materials and your actual painting materials. And that's because if you're new to painting, it can be quite daunting trying to work out what you need at each stage and also the quantity and you know the, the brand that you should be getting. So it pretty much saves you on time, quality and cost. As how successful you complete your job is as good as your preparation. And if you do not have all the tools required, you may just have to stop your job halfway until you get the tools in. So it's best to identify the tools you need beforehand, get them into position before you start um, prepping and painting, okay? And so here, the first step of the process would be to get our dust cover out, okay? 
if possible, get an extra pair of hands and move all the furniture out of the room. If your furniture is too large and heavy and you can't get it out the room, move it to the center of the room and cover it with a furniture dust cover protector. And that's because you do not want any overspray during your brush application onto the wall to spill onto your furniture. So it's important that you cover, you know, your furniture. Look for any cuts, holes or apertures on your cover protector and tape it up with a masking tape, okay? It's very important. Otherwise, paint could seep through the holes, you know, on the sheet if it's been perforated during handling and, you know, that could spill onto your furniture. And that's pretty much your wardrobe taped up with the masking tape and the dust furniture cover protector. And you know, what you're trying to achieve with your painting is different for everyone, okay? Suffice to say, it is bespoke to requirements. And what I mean by this is that, you know, I want to keep the skirting and the roof, okay? I do not want to paint over it, so I will be masking the skirting and the roof. You might decide that you want to paint your skirting, so you, you might not, you know, need to mask your, your skirting and your roof, okay? So, always plan ahead and think about what you're doing and that's because if you paint over, say for example, a skirting that you want to keep, you might incur more, more costs, okay? So just be careful. So here, I'm going to run the frock tape along the skirting's line of travel and then subsequently replicate the process around the perimeter of the door frame. And once we're done with the skirting and the door frame, repeat and reproduce the process around switches and sockets. So we're pretty much going to cover our switches and sockets with painter's tape or frock tape. So spread out the tape evenly around the perimeter of the switch whilst ensuring that you've got no opening where you've latched on the tape you know you don't want paint you know seeping through any opening that you've got on the um, frock tape just make sure that you cover any opening and like i said as with any painting job you are only as good as your preparation if you prep or prepare your wall adequately you are about 50 percent done with the job you know, prepping helps with aesthetics, helps maintain a Preston look, you know, clean cuts and straight lines whilst painting. So the next step of the process would be to utilise a Harris polythene film. You know, it's pretty much a dust sheet on the roll. And we are going to use it to cover the window area as well as the door area. Its primary use is for protecting furniture and carpet, you know, when painting, so that paint will not penetrate. But the film is quite thin and can easily break. And that was why I reverted to using the self-pack furniture protector or dust cover, you know, which, which was about 5 by 3 meter to cover the wardrobe. And, you know, the Harry's polythene film dot sheet on a roll will be used to cover just the um, window and the doors because it's quite thin. You know, but it just about does the job, okay? When used in conjunction with brown paper or general purpose masking paper. When covering doors, I tend to open up the polythene film. But when, you know, covering the window area, I tend to double up on the polythene film. And that's because doubling up on the film prevents it from being see-through or at least reduces the see-through tendencies a great deal and you know doubling up on the film makes it more thicker and or more sturdier you know against the influx of air or gush of wind that may be coming you know through the window opening because you don't want to you know shut your windows all through when you're painting you need some some form of ventilation you know you need air you know proper circulation in the property so you know just bear that in mind and as you can see i've covered up the window stool with polythene and frock tape to prevent paint you know or the overspray from paint you know um latching onto the um, window stool if paint spills onto it, you may need to um, repaint it. So just, you know, make sure that, you know, you've prepped your window area, you know, you've covered every 
all all the nooks and crannies and you know wherever you've got any opening make sure you tape it over with a frock tape or masking tape and um, whichever you know is more convenient and shut the window when you're masking and when you're done masking leave the window slightly ajar and you know if the covering isn't very sturdy reinforce the um, polythene um, covering up, up until you're sure that you know your um, covering can withstand you know the wind to a certain degree and when you're ventilating don't just open up all, all of your windows just leave it slightly ajar okay and again repeat and reproduce the process for your radiator you know it's very important that you mask around your radiator so that you do not get paint spilled you know either you know from the front or at the back so make sure you tape over you know the wiring you know at the back of your radiator and you get the poly polythene sheet all over you know the parts of the um, the radiator housing okay use masking tape to cover the metal brackets that you know hold the radiator into position in situ and you know with this type of radiator you can easily lift it you know from the two metal brackets that you know secure it you know onto the wall but just make sure that when you when you dislodge the radiator from the metal brackets, you know, that you do not, you know, sever the wire or break the wires. So you support it underneath with, with an object of about the same height clearance from, from the bottom whilst you provide the support yourself. And when you're done masking, you know, secure it back into position, okay? The next step of the process would be to cover them doors, you know, with the polythene um, film. You can double down on the doors as well, okay? If you feel that the film is, is very thin, you know, over the door. In this instance, I have doubled down on the polythene film and that's because there'll be a lot of traction in and out of the door. The next step of the process would be to visually inspect, you know, all of the prep masking around the radiator, the window, the furniture, you know, covering, you know, the um, masking around the corners or, you know, of the room or the skating board and the ceiling corners as well because I, I want to keep, you know, the um, the roof painting, okay? So I have to mask around, you know, the, the corners of the roof. And so as you can see, I have got masking around the perimeter of the ceiling, around the skating board and, you know, around the recess of the window. And that's because I do not want any infusion or seeping through of paint, you know, onto the parts that I want to keep. And that's where your frock tape comes in handy. You know, it essentially keeps paint out, okay? So it's important to visually inspect, you know, to map out and plan out what you want to paint and what you do not want to paint over. And then subsequently cover up any sockets or switches that haven't been masked. And once all the masking around the switches, the sockets, the door, the ceiling, the skating board and the windows have been sorted, we can proceed to cover up the carpet with a carpet protector. And so here we've got a Pac-X self-adhesive protection film. It is 625mm in width and 25m in length and can cover 15.6 square meter. Before you use the carpet protector, carry out a test on a small area on the surface to be protected, in this, in this case, you know, the carpet. Essentially, to ensure compatibility with the carpet protector's adhesive, as failure to do so may lead to the transfer of the carpet protector's branding onto the surface. And in, in this question, the carpet, so you might have the branding of the pack x you know, on your carpet if you do not test out a small area. The cost of carpets can be quite expensive to purchase and to install. So before you install the carpet protector, just make sure that your lacquers, vanishes and other finishes have been fully cured. Okay. Some of the advantages of using the um, carpet protector is that it's got a secure hold, no tapes are needed, it's low slip and no rocking. You know, it's very, it comes in very handy, you know, in your staircase and your room carpets. You know, it makes your life a lot easier if you're painting around your staircase. You can see under the film, like I said, you know, it's no trip hazard, it's low slip, it's quite thick. Um, you know, no tapes are needed, you know, so it's a no-brainer.
and say for example if you're done with the painting of this particular room you can get an extra pair of hand you know to lift up the um, carpet protector to a different room you know as the carpet protector can be reused in its spread out states so just get an extra pair of hands to lift off the carpet protector to a different area the carpet protector's self-adhesive feet is designed for temporary surface protection against debris, spillages and potential scratches, but not for corrosion, humidity or chemicals. Do not use on polyvinylidene fluoride or PVDF, plastisol and polyurethane paints. These are the exceptions. The recommended maximum usage of the PAC-X protection films is 4 to 6 weeks between 6 to 12 months. The carpet protector can be applied to a wide range of surfaces. And so when selecting the roll to match the surface, you know, red is for carpet, which I've got here. Black is for your hat floor. Blue for glass and glazing. The grey one for the interior surface. And the fleece for impact protection. So, you know, just the color coded, okay? And as you can see, I have rolled out the carpet protector all over 99.9% .9 of the carpet, okay? And to cover up any severance around the corners of the room, you know, where I've got the carpet protector starting from, I will be using the general purpose masking um, protector paper, which is the brown paper here, you know, just to cover up any loose ends that, you know, I might not be seeing, okay? to provide an extra layer of protection around the skirt and just to make sure that no paint um, seeps you know onto the carpet so the brown paper catches any paint spilling off you know the um, carpet protector serves as an extra bit of layer of protection for the carpet okay and you can take it a step further by using the pulley packed um, dust cloth sheet if you've got a lot of traction around your work area and you're worried about spills you know, say for example on a white carpet, you know, the dust cloth sheet could come in very handy. You know, it's water, water resistant. It's got a polypropylene and polyethylene layer to it. You know, polypropylene very resistant to absorbing moisture. And as such, it's non-porous. Polyethylene plastic, on the other hand, is also non-porous and non-stretching, okay? And, you know, depending on the size of your room, you might need about two or three frock tapes. As you do not want brush strokes, you know, on your lighting, okay? And now that you get the hang of it, you can replicate this process in other areas in the property. It's basically the same process. This is the um, the building block, you know, of, of um, how, how you should be masking. And, you know, in this case, you know, such as the extractor, you know, on the ceiling and the lighting. The next step of the process would be to replicate or repeat and reproduce the masking process of the room in the bathroom. And if you've got a vinyl flooring, you can use your dust cloth sheet, um, your general masking brown paper, you know, whatever, whatever you can get your hands on that just about covers, you know, the perimeter or, or area of the floor. We've got brown paper on the floor and, you know, the bath tub. We've also covered the wash basin and, you know, the plastic behind the wash basin. But you get the hang of what we're trying to do. We're just trying to ensure that, you know, the stroke of the brush, you know, with paint doesn't latch onto areas that we do not want paint um, to get onto. And so you can see here that we've got some masking tape around the door frame, you know, on the ceiling perimeter. I have also doubled up on the protective film cover over the door. The radiator has been covered up as well. And also we'll be covering up the um, shower curtains. You can take it off, you know, if you want to and, you know, cover up, you know, the rest of the um, tub if you want to. You know, it basically, you know, essentially entails, you know, masking areas that you do not want the paint to latch onto, okay? Click on the link in the description, you know, for videos on how to paint and how to take off, you know, the masking from your wall, okay? And that's about it, really. If you found the information useful, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Help the channel grow and hopefully catch up with you later. Goodbye.